what is parkinsonism it is basically a progressive neurological disorders of muscle movement caused by Uh, caused by decreased dopamine in substantia nigra of brain, characterized by four cardinal features. What are those cardinal features? First of all, is bradykinesia, muscular rigidity, resting tremors, and impairment of postural balance, leading to disturbances of gait and balance. It means bradykinesia is there, muscle rigidity is there, resting tremors is there, and postural imbalance is there. So it basically the movement disorders involves bradykinesia, akinesia, rigidity, tremor, dyskinesia, freezing of gait. Cognitive and behavioral disorders are also associated with it, and it includes dementia, depression, hallucination. Then we also have sensory sleep and, and emotional problems. I think I should show you a video in the beginning. I wish I can. Take care of videos last night, Carleton. Okay, so. There are two types of uh, Parkinson's. According to etiology, there are two types. The first one is idiopathic, in which the cause is unknown. But what happens there, uh, is that there is a progressive degeneration of dopaminergic producing neurons. Take care of, of which neurons will be affected. Dopaminergic neurons will be affected. And uh, there is a progressive degeneration. Now there is a secondary Parkinson disease. And the etiology is usually external, like uh, it can be due to drugs such as antipsychotics and other drugs, drugs for example, the tyrophenone reserve pain. These can also elicit the uh, Parkinsonism. Okay, so the our primary focus today is on idiopathic Parkinson disease, which is basically is a result of progressive. Degeneration of dopamine producing neurons in the substantia nigra that is thought to cause an imbalance in dopamine and acetylcholine action on neurons of the corpus striatum. So, what happens basically that there is an imbalance between dopamine and acetylcholine. Uh, as a result, what happens? Motor activity control will be disturbed and it also modulates dopaminergic output. By a feedback loop. And what happens as a net effect that there is a reduced output of dopamine? What happens that there is a reduced output of dopamine? Please be remember it. And relative increase in acetylcholine activity. So, can, so I think uh, till now, the more clear hoga, ke the uh, dopaminergic output is decreased and acetylcholine activity is increased, right? As a result, what happens? There is a net loss of inhibitory regulation of the neuronal release of GABA. You know that GABA is always responsible for uh, inhibition. So if there is a, that, that inhibitory regulation of GABA is also lost, so it will lead to the characteristics movement disorders of Parkinson, Parkinson disease. Okay. So what, hap what is happening till now? that there is an imbalance between G and acetylcholine. I think this is something crystal clear to everyone. And, and net, what is the net effect? That the inhibitory effect of GABA is also compromised. That leads to the movement disorders imbalances. And idiopathic Parkinson disease is the most common type of Parkinsonism. And it basically the symptoms are tremors, rigidity, and slowness of movement. Now, what should, before treating the patient, uh, what should be the goal of treatment in our mind? Basically, it is not yet possible to reverse the degenerative process. To karabi ho gaye, degeneration ho gaye, we cannot stop it. But what we can do, we will give the drugs that are used to increase DA activity or to reduce excitatory interneuron acetylcholine activity. 
ठीक है तो हमें क्या करना है we have to increase the dopaminergic activity and we have to reduce acetylcholine activity in order to restore their balance in the corpus striatum so there are different drugs which can be used in uh, treating parkinson disease as the name indicate to the dopamine he uh, we have to improve the dopamine so we need a dopaminergic precursor which is levodopa and uh, as it can be metabolized in the periphery so we need a dopamine decarboxylase inhibitor which is carbidopa then we have dopamine agonist we have uh, mao inhibitors we have comps inhibitors antiviral and antimuscarinic why we need antimuscarinic because there is an excess of acetylcholine activity right so we can suppress it and it will help in improving the symptoms theek hai to abhi humne kya kara what was the pathology the pathology was that that there is a impairment of dopaminergic activity whatever the cause is okay and there is an excess of acetylcholine activity so we are trying to give all those drugs that will increase the dopamine either the dopamine will be increased or either what happens that uh, the acetylcholine activity will be decreased so net what happens that there is a balance between ga and acetylcholine theek hai so we have levodopa which is basically a precursor of dopa levodopa we have carbidopa which basically help in uh, dopa decarboxylase and as a result dopamine is formed so then we have dopamine a agonist that will activate the dopamine then we have antiviral amantadine that will also increase dopaminergic activity we have monoamine oxidase inhibitor that will also help in increasing dopamine and we have comped that again will increase dopaminergic activity what is levodopa levodopa is basically is the most effective drug used in the treatment of parkinson and it is basically a metabolic precursor of dopamine and also you can say that it is an isomer of dopa and what does it do it basically pre junctionally decarboxylated in the cns to restore dopaminergic activity in the corpus striatum theek hai and what happens as a result it pre junctionally ye kya karegi it will become decarboxylated in the cns and what does it do it restores the dopaminergic activity as a result what happens that it will interact with the d2 and d3 receptor to activate inhibitory g protein theek hai because we have discussed this earlier as well jo g protein hai gamma protein hai they are also impaired so we have to activate them in order to uh, manage the balance and also inhibit adenylcyclate it also decreases cyclic amp levels and open potassium channels so what happens as a consequence the dopamine produces responsible for the therapeutic effectiveness of the drug in the pd after this release what happens the peak of dopamine release ho gayi then what will happen it is either transported back into the dopaminergic terminals by the pre synaptic uptake mechanism or either it will metabolize theek hai अब क्या हो गया कि हमने डोपामीन तो फॉर्म कर दी बट व्हाट विल हैपन टू द डोपामीन डोपामीन विल बी इधर ट्रांसपोर्टेड बैक और इधर विल बी मेटाबोलाइज्ड बाय एमएओ माओ इनहिबिटर्स और कैथाकोल ओ मिथाइल ट्रांसफर ठीक है तो लीवर डोपा ने क्या करा लीवर डोपा इज बेसिकली द प्रीकर्सर ऑफ डोपामीन और डिकार्बोक्सिलेट हो गया एंड इट फॉर्म्स डोपामीन नॉट डोपामीन इज फॉर्म एंड इट इज एक्टिवेटिंग द एगोनिस्ट एक्टिविटी एट डी टू एंड डी थ्री डी थ्री रिसेप्टर ठीक है अब क्या हुआ कि चलें डोपामीन तो प्रोड्यूस हो गया नाउ व्हाट कैन बी द थेरप हाउ वी विल अचीव द थेरापूटिक इफेक्टिवनेस अब क्या होगा कि डोपामीन जो है या तो इट विल गो बैक टू द डोपामिनर्जिक टर्मिनल्स और इधर इट विल मेटाबोलाइज मैं क्यों इसको एम्फसाइज कर रही हूं बिकॉज़ जो नेक्स्ट हमारे दोनों ग्रुप्स हैं दैट इज माओ इनहिबिटर एंड कॉम्प्ट इनहिबिटर दे विल एक्ट बाय regulating this pathway theek hai acha dopamine itself it cannot cross the blood brain barrier so therefore does not have no skin as effect but jo levodopa hai which is an immediate precursor of dopamine it will easily transport it 
into the CNS and it will convert into dopamine and it can improve the CNS symptoms. Now, what is the problem with the liver dopa is this, that for example, after liver dopa, like we don't give monotherapy of liver dopa because it is decarboxylated by enzyme in the peripheral side so that little unchained drug reaches the cerebral circulation. In, do, in addition, dopamine releases into the circulation by peripheral conversion of dopa, liver dopa produces undesirable effects as well. Achha, hota hai ki when there is a peripheral convert, converse, uh, conversion of liver dopa, it can elicit certain undesirable effects. For example, nausea, vomiting, cardiac arrhythmia, and hypertension. So how we will uh, manage this situation? What we will do, we always administer liver dopa in combination with carbi dopa. And what does it do? It basically inhibits peripheral decarboxylase and it basically increases the fraction of administered liver dopa and crosses the blood brain barrier. So, overall, because liver dopa will not be metabolized easily in the periphery, so we don't have to give, uh, we can decrease the dose of the liver dopa. If the dose of the liver dopa is decreased, so more dopa, so what happens? First of all, because of the carbi dopa, more dopamine uh, will be available and there will be lesser chances of adverse effects as well. Okay, now let's see. Uh, better to stay side effects and liver dopa, they are equally important. So we have certain side effects, like we have central side effects and peripheral side effects. Central side effects, kya hai? we have dyskinesia. Okay, movement disorder, hai na? what is dyskinesia? Dyskinesia are characterized by variety of repetitive involuntary abnormal movement. For example, dystonia, tics, balanceness, trauma, myoclonus, and it can affect the face, trunk, and knee. Achha. How it can be relieved? It can be relieved by decreasing the dose of liver dopa. Okay, now the second effect is akinesia. These are all the adverse effects. Akinesia are characterized by decreased voluntary movement that lasts for few minutes, minutes or several hours. We have two types of akinesia. First of all, we have uh, end of dose akinesia, or you can also say on and off akinesia. What is end, dose, uh, end of dose akinesia? Each dose of liver dopa improves mobility for a period of time, but is followed by rapid return of muscle release. So first of all, what happens? Okay, liver dopa will improve the mobility, but followed by rapid return of muscle rigidity and akinesia before the end of the dose in interval. Now, how can we cover it? Increasing the dose and increasing the dose and frequency of liver dopa administration may relieve these symptoms, but can also induce dyskinesia. Akinesia is the movement is decreased, so we can increase the dose. Dyskinesia is the movements are increased, so we can decrease the dose. So it goes once and once On and off, uh, a kinase, as the name indicates, that there is a rapid fluctuation between showing no beneficial effect and showing beneficial effect. Okay, a kinase is usually jaldi nahi hota. It is a long-term side effect, and it is basically due to the dopamine neuron degeneration. If it is degenerative process, it is going on. We cannot stop it. We are just improving the symptoms of the patient. Okay. So whenever think about the side effects of liver dopa, because we are treating the movement disorder, so what happens, either the movement will decrease as a consequence or the movement will increase. When there is decreased movement, that is akinesia, we need to increase the dose. When there is a decreased movement, we have to decrease the dose. Now peripheral may have because uh, because it is, uh, it can stimulate the chemoreceptor trigger zone. So it can lead to anorexia, nausea, and vomiting. Uh, it can also elicit cardiac arrhythmias. It can also cause this mitriasis. It can also cause this a brownish discoloration of saliva and beauty because of melanin pigment production. Okay. Now certain drug infections which are very important that it shouldn't be given with vitamin B6 because it basically uh, increases the peripheral breakdown of liver dopa and it should uh, when we give with uh, 
if we will give it with MAO inhibitor such as phenyl three, it can also elicit hypertensive factor. So these are the two uh, target fraction. Then we have delayed complications of levodopa that includes bearing of. What is bearing of? It is a complication that can occur after few years of using levodopa. During bearing of, symptoms of Parkinson starts to return or worsen. Means after this, we stop करना शुरू करा. लेकिन क्या हुआ कि the symptoms of Parkinson starts to return or worsen before the next dose of levodopa. Okay. So, kindly, uh, beta, raise your hands in between. so that i can see that you people are still awake i know thoda topic boring hai but isko aise hi padhna padta hai theek hai so overall till now we have studied that what is levodopa levodopa is basically kya hai dopaminergic uh, precursor hai theek hai and to avoid the its decarboxylation it is always administered with carbidopa okay the second category in this uh, treatment is dopamine receptor agonist that includes ergot derivatives such as bromocriptine non ergot derivatives such as propinrol premipexol epomorphine right acha jitne bhi ergot derivatives hai they have a longer duration of action than that of levodopa and is are effective in patient exhibiting fluctuation because we have already seen that if the patient will develop fluctuation it is very difficult to continue levodopa so in those cases we can switch it to dopaminergic receptor agonist promocriptine is a ergot derivative it is partial agonist and it basically increases the functional activity of dopamine neuron transmission it can be used as monotherapy and and what are the adverse effects promocriptine is basically ergot derivative ठीक है, so it has uh, more potential to cause adverse effects. For example, hallucination, confusion, nausea, orthostatic hypertension, dyskinesia. It can. It also has a potential to cause pulmonary and retroperitoneal fibrosis. Then we have epomorphine, pemipexol, rotecotine, and ropinrol. These all are ergot derivatives as well, but they are not. they are uh, dopaminergic agonist as well but they are not ergotic so it can leads to nausea hallucination insomnia and okay then we have monoamine oxidase inhibitors what are monoamine oxidase inhibitors monoamine oxidase inhibitors are basically there are we have two types of monoamine oxidase first of all uh, we call this thing so monoamine oxidase a it basically metabolizes Not epine, epine, and serotonin, and monoamine oxidase B. It basically metabolizes dopamine. So our today's uh, our interest is on monoamine oxidase B because it metabolizes dopamine. In this class, we have selegiline. What selegiline do? Uh, it will inhibit MAO type B at low to moderate doses, and it usually doesn't inhibit uh, type A. Uh, in the given to required dose only, it usually doesn't inhibit MAO type B. By decreasing the metabolism of dopamine, selegiline increases dopamine levels in the brain. So overall, what is the result? That it will basically increase the dopamine in the brain. When selegiline is administered with levodopa, it, it, it enhances the action of levodopa and substantially require reduces the required dose. And it has a little potential. For causing hypertensive crisis. Abhi humne padha tha ki what are the uh, in drug interaction that it's that MAO uh, inhibitors should be avoided with the uh, with carbidopa, right? With levodopa. So, but if selegiline uh, has a little potential for causing hypertensive crisis, so it can prescribe along with levodopa and carbidopa. Then we have COMT inhibitors. COMT inhibitors का ये है. Let's see this. Uh, for example, we have levodopa. ठीक है. Levodopa has two things. Okay, that it will convert it into dopamine, the normal dopamine. है. The second phase is uh, the formation of methyl dopa in the form in the presence of COMT. ठीक है. 
अब व्हाट हैपेंस फॉर एग्जांपल अच्छा व्हाट इज द पर्पस ऑफ मिथाइल डोपा दैट मिथाइल डोपा इज आल्सो अ पार्शियल एगोनिस्ट ऑफ डोपामाइन अच्छा व्हाट इज पार्शियल एगोनिस्ट रिकॉल करो पार्शियल एगोनिस्ट क्या करता है कि जो नॉर्मल डोपामाइन है या व्हाटएवर द ड्रग इज उसको अवॉइड करता है या इट कॉम्पीट्स विद इट सो देयर इज अ कॉम्पिटिशन सो देयर इज अ कॉम्पिटिशन समटाइम्स विद द रिसेप्टर इधर द डोपामाइन विल बाइंड For example, there are four receptors. So, yeah. So, what will happen? The methyl dopa will compete for its seat, right? So, sometimes methyl dopa will bind to it. Sometimes dopamine will bind to it. So, there is a continuous competition. For example, if we will decrease this methyl dopa, okay? What we will how uh, this thing is achieved by administering COM inhibitors, okay? If we will inhibit this step, what happens? There is no competition for dopamine. Whatever dopamine is available in the body, it will bind to the to that particular receptor, and it will elicit the response. Yeh yoga na. So this is how we will achieve the action by competition. Normally, uh, the methyl. Okay. Normally, what happens? That uh, liver dopa is metabolized by catechol uh, O methyl transferase to three O methyl dopa, and it's a minor pathway. However, when peripheral dopamine decarboxylase activity is inhibited by carbi dopa, a significant concentration of three O methyl dopa is formed that competes with liver dopa for active transport into the brain. We have already discussed it. Okay, so what happens if we will give carbi dopa, or we if we will give uh, com trans com inhibitors like tolcapone? So there is a lesser formation of methyl dopa. Okay, so entacapone and tolcapone they are both are the members of com inhibitors, and they basically selectively and reversibly inhibit catechol or methyl transferase. Inhibition of these agents lead to Decrease plasma concentration of 3O methyl dopa, and there is an increased central uptake of liver dopa, and greater concentration of brain dopa. So it decreases the symptoms of wearing off phenomena. So like, so there is more dopamine uh, available if there is a lesser competition. So that's why uh, some inhibitors can be given in uh, along with liver dopa as well and alone as well. Okay. What are the adverse effect of com com inhibitors? It can cause diarrhea, postural hypotension, nausea, anorexia, hallucination, sleep disorder, culminating hepatic necrosis, and orange discoloration of urine. Hope these things. Abhi tak thoda boring hai, I know, but uh, I think it should be clear to you. Okay? Okay. What is the mechanism of of com? What is the mechanism of uh, Mao inhibitors? Okay. Then we have anti-muscarinic agents. What is the function of anti-muscarinic agent? In the beginning of lecture, we have already discussed it that there is a hyperactivity of acetylcholine because the imbalance between dopaminergic activity and acetylcholine is impaired. So what we can do? We can in this condition we can also give anti-muscarinic agent. For example, benzopropane, trihexyphenidyl, procyclidine. What does they do? They basically block cholinergic transmission, produces effect similar to augmentation of dopaminergic transmission, and it helps in uh, correcting the imbalance. That's what it is. What is its function? Net result? Kya hai ki it will improve the imbalance. Adverse effects are muscarinic wale honge. Like mood changes, xerostomia, constipation, visual problems, and the uh, contraindication is also same. Uh, just like anti-muscarinic agents, for example, glaucoma, prostatic hyperplasia, pyloric stenosis. So this is how we basically treat the patient of Parkinson's disease. First of all, uh, we have to confirm that the patient, if a patient comes with us. That uh, have to we have to find out that whether it is idiopathic Parkinson disease, yes or no. If yes, 
So first of all, we will evaluate that whether it is Parkinson's disease or not. No, actually, yoga. Okay, for example, if something else will be deducted on uh, CT scan or MRI scan. For example, if the patient has Parkinson's disease, so we have to evaluate that if there is functional impairment or no functional impairment. Okay, if there is a functional impairment, so we have to consider immediate release. Combination of carbidopa and levodopa, which is available with the name of cinnamon. For example, okay, this was this is the first step. ठीक है अब क्या हुआ कि जो impairment है वो continue हो रही है. तो आप क्या करोगे? You will in, you will increase the dose of uh, the combination. ठीक है to the maximum tolerated dose. ठीक है अच्छा. Now what we will do? You can also act. Or you can also add uh, increased dopaminergic agonist with the maximum tolerated dose. Okay. Acha. The three things that we can do. Acha. What we will do that we either we have to start with the combination. We can also start with the dopamine agonist. Okay. And uh, later, what we can do? We can just increase the dose. If it is the disease is pro uh, pro progressing, so what we can do? We can give a combination of carbidopa and levodopa along with dopaminergic agonist. If the patient is developing motor complications, so either we have to fractionate the carbidopa levodopa therapy five times daily, or considering adding something else, for example, dopaminergic agonist, MAO inhibitor, or combination of them. But if a patient develops severe motor function, Uh, you have to consider referral for epimorphine therapy. Still, if there is no improvement, refer for still refer for possible functional neurotherapy. So this is how we manage the patient with Parkinson's disease. Okay. So hope till now these things are little bit clear.